Hey guys, this video is the second or the third installment of the Rube Goldberg video series that's going to help you prepare for simple machines in your Rube Goldberg project. And this video is going to be on the pulley. It should be pretty short and sweet. Uh, just to remind you of a few quick things, we were looking at a few different concepts where remember that work is constant as long as there's no friction, so the input work is equal to the output work that you do. Right? And so if we if we write out the equation for work, input force times input distance equals output force times output distance. We can see that uh, if you kind of remember the different variables and what they mean, the box that you're moving is the output force. That's known as the load, right? So it's like the weight of the box that you're moving. The distance output is how high you end up raising that box off the ground. So it could be, say, this little distance over here. Um, the input force is, of course, how hard you're having to pull or push, and the input distance is over which distance you pull or push. So we're going to look at some pulleys here, and let's flip to the next slide, and I'll add a little picture so we can just start talking about why are pulleys useful and why are they considered simple machines. Okay, so let's get a picture of a pulley up. So you can see here, this guy is pulling, he's lifting a barrel, right? And so right now, let's label, before we know anything about pulleys, let's label some of the things on this picture and we can use different colors so this is going to be the output force and let me get that to be a little bit thicker so we can actually see it maybe in blue so you can see it better so that's my that's my output force right that's the weight of the object that he's actually lifting up and so that we would label the output force the output distance is this right it's how high he has raised that barrel up off the ground within the pool. Then we've got to label his um, input force, which would be how hard he's pulling on here, and the input distance, and this one's kind of weird um, to think about, but it's actually how much rope he's pulled through. Um, if he started with the very beginning of the rope. So we have all those regions. And if you think about, let's just do a quick little thing of the inclined plane, it's kind of the same thing, right? If I raise the box up an inclined plane, the box itself is the force output. The distance that the box is going to be moved is the input distance, right, over which my input force, which is how hard I'm pushing on the box, it's going to be raised some height DO, okay? distance out. So you can kind of see some of the similarities. The barrel is the force out, that's the load, that's the same as the box on the incline. The input distance is the distance over which you apply your force, which would be pretty much the length of the rope that you pull through the pulley. Now let's take a look at this pulley and see what is it actually being used for. So let me move. Um, actually that's okay. We'll just look at it here. How hard is he having to pull? Well, actually, in this picture, he's actually having to pull the exact same weight as the barrel. So the, the pulley here is not actually making his input force any less. Because remember, that's what simple machines want to do. They want to make your input force less by increasing your input distance, right? And that's going to keep the work done the same. So basically, you have to pull a whole lot of strength through the pulley, but you're going to have to pull with less effort. In this picture, that's not happening. The only thing that the pulley is useful for here, and this is actually one of the uses of a pulley, and there are two uses that you need to know. One of the uses is it just redirects the force. So instead of him having to stand up here somewhere on a little platform and pull up, he can pull down just like blinds, right? And you can end up redirecting the force to make it more convenient. But it's not making his input force less. So let's look on the next slide is how can a pulley actually make something a job easier to do? Here's an example uh, picture. Here we have a fixed pulley, which is that one, and then here we have a movable pulley, which is this one. Okay, And you can see the one on the left is not actually being used for anything except to redirect force, and that's not considered mechanical advantage um, by sort of numerical means. So it's not actually making the input force less by numerical amount. So it's not making, like, say that paint bucket is... 10 pounds, you would still be pulling with 10 pounds, it's just you're pulling in a different direction. So it makes it, you know, sort of more convenient, but it's not making it any easier. Whereas the pulley system on the right is actually making it easier, which is pretty cool. And you can see that if you really analyze the situation. So let me get a different color here. And you can see that 
the wall, the the ceiling or whatever this wooden thing is is actually holding half of the the weight the paint the paint cans uh, weight. So if that's a ten pound paint can, this side is holding five pounds of it. Um, you might remember some of our dynamics problems where we had like a painting hanging on the wall, and that was about how it worked. Now this would be exactly five pounds because it's a bit of an angle, but we're not going to consider that. So I'm having to pull up on this side, and I'm only pulling with five pounds, even though I'm lifting a ten pound object. So that's kind of interesting. So let's take a look at it more complicated pulleys, where this one's you you still have to pull upwards, and that may not be that convenient. So let's see if we can even redirect it again to make the pulling less. So here's a pretty crazy picture. Just look at each one consecutively, and then we'll figure out how is the pulley actually helpful. So the first one on the far left, this pulley, you would actually have to pull on this with 100 newtons. All it's doing is redirecting the force. However, the next one, the way we know, is we'll count these two supporting strings. Now notice, the pulley on the bottom, this one, that one's movable. So the box is attached to the bottom of it, and it's not attached to the rope. The rope's going through it. And the way that I would string that pulley is I'd actually start by tying a knot, and I'm gonna, you can trace it with me. I'm going to use this green color. You'd start by tying a knot right here. We'd loop the string around this pulley. We loop it again around that pulley. And I'm going to pull straight down like that. Now, if you think of it before, the way that the last picture was in the last slide, you would have, you would have had what I'm about to trace in yellow. You would have had this and you'd be pulling straight up. But we redirected it one more time so we could pull. And so here, you're actually going to be pulling with whatever force is on this outside rope over here. So that would be the one, uh, let me draw this in. This one's holding uh, 50 newtons, and this one's holding 50 newtons. And you're pulling on that one that's still 50 newtons. So that's, you're only having to exert now 50 newtons of force, which is pretty cool. Let's do the next one. Here's even makes it even better, even more useful. I'll use a green again to trace the string. So now I have a movable pulley on the bottom, and I have a double pulley at the top. And there's, you can get those where the, the one, this pulley right here, is actually uh, mounted right next to that one to make it take up less room. But basically, if we're going to trace, we're going to trace from here. This is the string. It goes around that. So it's attached. It's fixed. It's attached right there. This one goes around that pulley. This, the string goes around here. We're looping it through, kind of like a yo-yo. And then around the top one, and I'm pulling down like that. Let's count how many strings we have supporting. We've got one. That's going to take some of the weight. That's going to take some of the weight. And then that's the weight you're pulling with, right? Now it's pulled, redirected round. So each of those would be, how much do you think? If this one was... 100 divided by 2, which is 50 each. This one's 100 divided by 3, which is going to be about, what, 33 newtons each. And that's how hard you'd have to pull with, 33 newtons. The last string is the one you're pulling on. It's just redirected down. Similarly, let's do the next one. Trace that one out. Uh, I'll use this blue. Now you see we flip to attach right here. Now we've got two double pulleys. The bottom one's movable. The top one's fixed on the ceiling. Trace out the rope goes around the inside, and then goes around the outside, and I'm pulling down like that. So let's count. One, two, three, four. So if I'm pulling on this outside one right here, right, this one on the outside, that means that I'm pulling with only, you guessed it, 25 newtons. So if I have more pulleys here, more loops of string, I'm having to do a lot less effort. The very last one, we could even do it without tracing the, the string, even though you can trace it. It starts in the middle, goes to the second ones, goes to the outer ones. We've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're pulling on the very outside one right here. That's redirected. So you take 100 and divide it by six, and that's what you're pulling with. So that makes pulleys easy. So here's a little trick. Let's go to the new a new slide. Actually, we can do it on this slide. I'll just move the picture up out of the way a bit. I'll just use these as an example. To find the mechanical advantage, or I guess I should say the ideal mechanical advantage, 
you could do distance in over distance out um, and get it that way by measuring how much string you pulled through over how high it was lifted, but there's an easier way. All you have to do is say that the IMA is the number of supporting loops or strings. And they're not separate strings, that's why I say loops. So on this first pulley over here, it would be one, two. That's how many you're pulling with. Now, or how many supporting it. So that mechanical advantage is two. So it makes sense. It mul mechanical advantage is the number you'd multiply your input force by. Okay, so, and that would mean, that was read right. I'm pulling with 50 newtons multiplied by two. That means I can lift 100 newton box. So you don't count the string you're pulling on because it's already counted as this one right here, right? This one that wraps around. So on this one, I'm going to have one, two, three. So that mechanical advantage would be number of supporting loops, three. Very good. And let's move along. This one would be one, uh, let me see. I can actually count that. It's kind of colored over the whole thing. One, two, three, four. So mechanical advantage of four. So pulley is pretty easy in that regard. You can actually combine pulleys with other simple machines. Like um, if you have an inclined plane and you have a pulley at the top here, you have a box, you have a pulley attached to the box, and then you do the little loop pattern, right? You pull around and like this, you're actually having to pull with a lot less because the inclined plane's helping you and the pulley's helping you at the same time. So that's the video on pulleys. Hope that helps when you make your uh, complete your worksheet. And uh, good luck with coming up with some designs in the next installment.